Finally, I have acquired the Elder Scrolls Online! Ready to take on the world! Whoa, whoa, whoa there, you scrubbling! Aren't you wanting to learn a couple of master tips before you head out into the world? To get an edge on all the other socially awkward humans joining this game? To be able to hang your enemy's head on a pike before level one? No, I know what I'm doing. So, here you are, entering the world of Elder Scrolls Online. You've made a great looking... <laughs> and you're ready to take on everything at once. Here's a couple things to remember before you get out there and get your butt handed to you. ESO is not a race to the max level. So many people rush out of their door in order to hit the max level in the fastest way possible that they sometimes forget their common sense on the front porch. Preparing as you level is much more important than fast leveling. Plus, there's literally four different phases of leveling to go through. Level 1 to 50, your main level. This is when you should be focusing on learning the ropes of your character, plus you get rewards for leveling up. Champion level 160. This is the cap for armor scaling. Once you hit this, all the gear you acquire will be 160. The overall champion point cap. This is the highest amount of champion points you can have. For example, in the current patch, the CP cap is 720. And finally, but most important, the uber nerd status. Who can be the highest level player in the world because that is such a status symbol of great strength. Next up, we've got Sky Shards, Lore Books, and Destination. First things first, if you're on PC, download the add-on Sky Shards, Lore Books, and yes, Destination. It'll literally take you to everything you need. You need to be a simple person. If you see a glowy thing, you acquire the glowy thing. Sky Shards are incredibly important, especially at higher levels, so grab them always. You see a shiny purple book, read it. Yes, I know you don't like reading, but this time you're getting a book that literally levels your mage's guild just by simply flipping it open and slamming it shut. These are lore books, and it takes a long time to level up the mage's guild, so read them when you see them. On the topic of books, open every single bookshelf you can. Sometimes you can randomly level up skill lines just by reading them real quick. And you thought high school was the end of your reading career. Next up, discover way shrines whenever you can, or just random destinations. Way shrines are important because you can hop from one discovered one to another as a quick way of traveling, whereas other destinations will just give you some quick experience. Now for the smart way of leveling your trees. Easy, water and natural light, moving up. <laughs> I'm such a comedian. Literally remember these few steps to maximize your ability and skill tree leveling. The more you have of something, the more you level it. In armor's sake, the more light, medium, or heavy you have on at the same time, the faster you'll level that tree. On top of that, quick note, for magical players use light armor, for stamina base players use medium, and for players who want more health and tankier builds, use heavy armor. Or just go naked to try to be the money making build. For weapons, you will get one slottable weapon until level 15 where you can then have two weapons on at the same time and swap between them. Remember that for your abilities, the more you have on a single bar, the more it levels them. For example, if you have a bar of two destruction staff abilities and three class abilities, all from the same tree of course, you'll level those two trees at the same time if you're killing stuff on that bar. Try to rotate abilities around and if you're leveling a certain tree, make sure that there are more abilities from that certain tree on one bar. Don't focus too much on passives by the way, they won't help you level at all. And because skill points can be hard to come by, spending them on actives will help you level a lot faster. That's just me though, passives are for stat increases and won't actually help you level in any way. Also, if you messed up your skill points or attribute points, you can respect them later on at shrines or when you hit level 43, you'll receive a scroll to respect both of them. Up your bag space. Do you ever look in the mirror and say, I feel empty inside. Well, now you can attempt to fill that void with more materialistic possessions. You start off with a very slim pocket, so make sure that as you gain gold, you visit your local pack merchant to upgrade your inventory by 10 slots per purchase. The first couple are not expensive, and with the money you make from your level rewards, you'll have space in no time. On top of that, upgrading your account-wide bank space is a great idea, especially when you have a couple of characters all playing different roles. No, I already told you you get 10 slots for your tank set pieces. But that's not enough, you don't understand. Wait, he got 10? You told me I got 8! Well, you're not the master's main hero, now are you? <gasps> 
Somewhat on the topic of bag space, you'll unlock a mount as a level 10 reward. Here, you can actually upgrade your pack space even more, or make your mount faster, or finally, give them more stamina to reduce cooldown of all-out running and enemies knocking you off easily. It only costs 250 gold a day to upgrade your mount, and in total, you'll need 180 days to fully complete your mount training. Now, your mounts will be account shared between all your characters, but your upgrades will not, so get on it. It's never too early to start crafting. This one is easy. Pick up all of the armor pieces and weaponry you find and take it to your local crafting stations. The stuff that you don't want anymore or the stuff that you've outgrown. I know that we've had lots of memories together. I'm... I'm sorry. This can all be deconstructed to level up that tree. Or, if you see that it has a train on it that you have not researched, start doing that process right away. Every single piece of armor and weaponry needs to have every specific trait researched on it. And the more you do this, the longer it takes to research. So start early and get that out of the way. Finally, acquire friends. Let me get this straight. You're heading out to literally massacre Molag Ball, and you can't ask a guy who's picking his nose in the level 1 zone with you to be your friend? I mean, come on! Growing that friends list can benefit you in many ways. For example, you get more XP when you group up with one other person. They can help you beat the more difficult content. Even if you're not grouped up, you can teleport to their location like a creepy stalker just to travel around wherever you are without having to pay. Sometimes your friends are better than you, so they can craft you stuff. With more friends, you can start running 4 player dungeons. You now have the rights to brag to all of your imaginary friends in real life about your real life friends in an imaginary life. But most importantly, remember this one thing that no matter where you are, no matter how powerful you become, you will never amount to anything unless you get out there and you- yeah.